Hi, everybody. So how many people here have ever really loved a place? Like maybe you really love the stage. Maybe, maybe you love Miami. <laughs> maybe you care about uh, uh, your hangout in your neighborhood. Maybe you hang, uh, really care about a particular beach. Uh, but for me, I really love my neighborhood. I would even say I'm in love with my neighborhood. I live in Little Havana. <laughs> and I, I live in Little Havana. I work in Little Havana. I publish a guide to Little Havana. And I do tours of Little Havana. So I'm really invested in the neighborhood. And I have been known to um, sing boleros in the middle of Domino Plaza, which is basically like my love song uh, to this place. Um, but not everybody says good things about Little Havana. So for example, you know, some people think it's right out of Vice City, you know, the Little Havana where, you know, gang shootings are happening all the time. Uh, and, you know, people will describe it in a negative way, but they don't even live in the neighborhood. So what do you do when you really care about a place and, and you want to show your passion for it? Well, you can focus on the strengths, be realistic about the challenges, you use storytelling to tell the story about the place, and you connect with others. Some of you may recognize Steve Reutstein, for example, who's my fellow advocate from the Afro-Cuban funk group, Paulo. It helps when you have an all ally that has almost 5,000 followers on Twitter. Um, but he and I are telling the stories about all the strengths and positive things, the assets of, our neighbor, of this neighborhood. So we've got great music. We've got rumba, great uh, restaurants. We have saint processions. We even have our own patron saint. Um, and we have great art spaces. And it's the people that make this neighborhood so important. So it's not just about what you think are the strengths in your neighborhood. You know, you can go to community meetings, reach out to local organizations, have community dialogues, you know, talk to your neighbors. What do they love about the place. And think about stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who have a stake in the future of the neighborhood. So that can be local residents, young and old business owners. Um, for us, it's also our tourists. It's our visitors. They're important to our economy. It's a natural environment, too. And so you, once you identify the strengths, you also have to be realistic about what your challenges are. We have a lot of people cutting down trees in our neighborhood. We don't want to lose our identity to chain stores. We have really bad drivers <laughs> in our neighborhood and some transit issues. And, and also find out what people are saying online. Everyblock.com is a great tool. You can see the latest reviews on Yelp. You can set up a Google alert. I'm always, I have a Google alert for Little Havana so I can find out what people are saying in news stories. You can use Twitter. Twitter, you can save a search. I save a search for Little Havana. I have a list of the tweets by local business owners. There are, if uh, we have Facebook groups and pages that are focused on Little Havana, so I can hear the latest buzz about the neighborhood. And then you highlight the strengths or build awareness about the challenges with your storytelling. I tweeted when a local business owner chopped down all these trees. I took a photo of it with the business in the background, tweeted it, and Facebooked it. And within 24 hours, the owner wanted to meet with me. Um, you can speak in person, too. I did a presentation and tour for people in real estate about the neighborhood. People continue the story by spreading it online. I took a video um, of a girl doing hip hop from a local dance studio. She takes free hip hop classes. It built awareness about those classes. You can use mapping. Google Maps is a great tool. I was able to tell people until the 11th hour what was going to be happening at the Cayocho Festival by creating an interactive map of all the music events. And then when you're telling your story, you can use Yelp. We've had people Yelp, you know, five stars about the neighborhood. I have my own littlehavanaguide.com uh, where I talk about things. And then Steve uses Foursquare and he posts photos and lets people know about local businesses. Just this last Thursday, I was at City Hall. It was my first commission meeting, speaking out about the raising of a historic building by a bank. And, but I let people know that I was there. And I kept the story going online. 
And all these people on Facebook were offering to help out. So even people who don't live in the neighborhood were saying, hey, can you do this? A local architect said, hey, I'll do a mock-up of the site with keeping the facade of the historic building. You can show it to the bank. Other people were like, hey, I have investments with TD Bank. Maybe I can make a difference. So when you are communicating and listening to local stakeholders and to your neighbors, they come together and, and, and make it stronger, can build more awareness about what's going on. And then, of course, there's the place itself. There are the physical places where you can gather. We've got Futurama 1637, Body Arts Workshop. These are the places where people gather. Steve does great events. He brings together local businesses at uh, PAX and, and, and brings them together to, to promote everybody at the same time. So when you, when you love a place, you know what's really great? The place loves you back. The place makes it even wonderful, more wonderful for you to live there. So if you love Miami, and if you love a place in Miami, there's always something you can do, and you can start now.